All right, we're going to finally call the uh, January 2000, 2020, 2020 meeting of the uh, Short Preservation Commission to order. Paula, would you call the roll? Alan Brown. Present. Taylor Fudge. Present. Mary Jo Meacham. Klaus Ryman Phillip. Present. Linda Schultz. Present. Ann Zacharitz. You have a quorum. Okay. Uh, all right, I'd like to first go over the uh, procedure for the meeting that's on the back of the cover page of your agenda. <clears throat> the chairman will announce each case and ask interested parties to indicate their presence by raising their hand. Commissioners will discuss details of the case, calling on staff for details. Following this discussion, commissioners may choose to ask questions of parties present. Interested persons may speak to support or protest the application. The applicant will be entitled to one brief rebuttal. Interaction between applicant and protestants on the floor is not permitted. Persons speaking are asked to approach the center podium one at a time to introduce themselves by name and address, and also sign in, please, and to present their position as succinctly as possible. The commission asks each speaker to limit his or her remarks to no more than five minutes. Following the public hearing on an application, the commission will take one of the following actions. One, approve the certificate of appropriateness. Two, continue the proposal. Three, deny the proposal with prejudice, which means the application may not be resubmitted for at least one year unless the commission determines that circumstances have changed. Or four, deny the, the proposal without prejudice, which means the applicant may reapply at any time. When an application has been approved and after a 10-day protest period has expired, the historic preservation officer will mail the CA to the applicant. Construction, city construction permits cannot be issued until the CA has been issued. Contact HP staff for final design review inspection or to withdraw items that will not be completed. And finally, any, finally, any person aggrieved by any decision granting or denying a CA may appeal to the Oklahoma City Board of Adjustment. All appeals shall be made within 10 days of the commission decision by filing a written notice of appeal with the clerk of the BOA. Okay, with that, let's go on to uh, item two from the Office of the Historic Preservation Officer, Katie. Uh, the only thing I wanted to note was a reminder that we have our commission committee training coming up January 31st. That'll be across the street in the Civic Center um, Hall of Mirrors oh, okay. uh, for all of our design review committees, our, um, Arts Commission, Planning Commission. So you've, I'm sure you've gotten an email from Paula at this point, but just to remember to attend that. I don't think I've received that, but put it down, the 31st. Okay, um, on to code enforcement, no minutes, excuse me. Three, acceptance of minutes of the previous meeting. Are there any uh, uh, comments, corrections, or motion for acceptance? I'll make a motion for acceptance of the December minutes. A second. The bid by Klaus Ryman Phillips and second by Taylor Fudge. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, the minutes are accepted. On to code enforcement report now. Okay. Katie, any comment on this or anybody from the city? Um, I don't here? believe we have anyone here from the city to speak on this unless anyone is that I don't know. Um, <laughs> Somebody new? But, uh, just a refresher that this is a list of things that have received a notice of violation or that have proceeded to a citation. You can look up those citation numbers with the Action Center or contact our staff if you have questions about any of these. Okay, thank you. Um, so, continuous announcements and requests, look like none. Public hearings. Uh, consent docket, did you have something you wanted to add about that? Yeah, um, Item, let's see which one. Uh, number five on the consent docket, the pool and pool equipment has actually been administratively approved, so we can strike that from the consent docket. Okay. Is it that be moved or anything, Rita? Just okay. All right. Does anybody like to move one, remove one for consideration, or is there a motion for approval of the consent docket? I'd make a motion to approve the consent dockets, cases items one through five. Actually, through four, because so, five was struck. Is that oh, correct? One through four? Yeah. With five being struck. Okay. All second. 
We move by Taylor Fudge and seconded by Klaus Ryman Phillip. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, the consent docket is approved, and if you're on the consent docket and you're here, you can leave now. You've been approved, so. But you're welcome to stay. All right. Next, uh, on to items D, cases for individual consideration. Katie? HPCA 19-114 at 634 Northwest 20th Street, Mester Park Ward 6, consideration of possible action on application by, it's actually Carrie Adams, for John Adams, for certificate of appropriateness <laughs> to number two, relocate fence elective. And I'm going to pass down, um, we realize as you're going through the packet today that you guys were missing some photos that they had sent in mm -hmm. of their backyard and um, other fences along that same side street up and down the, the row. Um, so you can take a look at that as we okay. review the case. This, this property has been before the commission several times for a variety of different projects. What's in front of you today is a proposal to bring the fence on the west side of the backyard out from the back corner of the house toward the sidewalk to create more of a fenced in side yard. Is, is the applicant present? Okay, if you would come to the podium and introduce yourself. They're actually wanting to take the, the fence to the property line, isn't that correct? According to their site plan? Or? The, the, the goal you, is to bring it all the way to the sidewalk, correct? Uh, the goal is to bring it all the way to the sidewalk. Uh, John Adams, by the way. Um, okay, and your address and if you sign into. Uh, yes, 634 Northwest 20th. Okay. Um, the goal is to bring it all the way to the sidewalk, and we've talked to um, our neighbor, Pam, um, whose house you see right adjacent to ours there, um, about doing that. And um, again, that would, be, that would be an exception. Um, but if we can't bring it to the sidewalk, we'd still like to bring it to at least uh, two feet away from the sidewalk. And then uh, the fence itself would only come, it would be less than halfway um, toward the front of the house. It would actually still sit behind that bay window that's um, about halfway up the house. On your so, house, yeah. Correct. How does the proposed, right there, how does the proposed fence align with, uh, looks like it would be partially um, coming out uh, in, in, the, in, in front of the wall of the adjacent house? Yes. It, yeah, it would, it would come out in front of it, and so that's why we, we've talked to Pam about this since we moved in, and um, so I, I think she provided a letter. If not, I've got. We did. Several yes, copies we've got of a it. copy of a letter in your in the attachments at your okay. at everyone's seats okay. that is from that that neighbor to the south in support of their proposal. And, and is this the fence that you're proposing to put in? It looks like in the site plan that it is sitting a couple feet off of the sidewalk. Is that that's what it looks like in the? Yes. So. We had originally submitted that, and if we, would, if we could get it approved to come to the sidewalk, we would do that, but if not, we would set it off two feet from the sidewalk. Okay. I'm more comfortable with the two feet off the sidewalk, just personally, okay. um, but I don't know what the other fellow okay. commissioners are. Yeah, and into. the real reason we, we decided to go ahead and ask for it was, if you look, uh, you can kind of see in the house that's to the north there, but also um, several houses along the south. This would actually probably be the only fence that's not up against the sidewalk. Um, so there, there's several going both north and south that are up against the sidewalk there. So we, again, that's why we decided to go ahead and request it. So. And I did drive up and down the street just today, actually, because we talked about um, fences being along the sidewalk. There are several examples as you go north and south um, all through the neighborhood of fences that are all the way at the sidewalk, some that are sitting on kind of little concrete curbs that look quite old, some that look new, um, and I, I did not take the time to look up address by address and verify which ones had been approved or not. And then there are others where the fence sits well, um, well off the sidewalk, so we definitely have a mix of, of mm -hmm. conditions. I think the, you know, from, the, from a guidelines perspective, the, perhaps the larger concern is the fence coming out forward of the neighboring right. front porch and obscuring those views, but setback line or the building line. But this is a, uh, not a see-through fence, it's a wood fence? Correct, it would be, it's proposed to be the same material as the existing fence. And what's the height? Uh, six feet. You know, the guidelines say a corner lot 
should have a transparent fan. So, right. and I, I think that there is adequate reason for that. Mm -hmm. It's historically been uh, a, a standard that we've enforced. Mm -hmm. And part of it, of course, is to keep the openness from the sidewalk. Because when you're walking along a sidewalk, if the entire block is six foot mm -hmm. fences, it's a totally different um, impact on the neighborhood yep. than, than corner lots where you can see. And I mean, that all has a historical reference. So far, for me, it, if it were a transparent fence, if it were iron or whatever, mm -hmm. Then I would sort of start considering how important it was if it was two feet or one feet or... Yeah. But to have six-foot fences down the block on the sidewalk mm -hmm. is material for, for, the, for the impact on feel of the neighborhood and its historic yeah. sense. Actually, I don't know if any of the existing fences are see-through. There's maybe one or two that I've seen that have a... Um, There'll be wood with like an iron gate or something, um, but none of the other fences going to the north or the south have the see-through or are the see-through fence. So that same wood. So, Katie, this uh, handout you just gave us. Are these photographs along that street the fences? Yes, those are pictures that the the applicant provided via email of um, fences up and down. Now I'm forgetting what street we're at. Lee, um, is it Lee or Francis? That's the side street. Uh, Lee. Lee. Um, uh, to the north and south of, of their house. I, yeah, I, to me, it's either, I don't see the point of leaving a two foot strip, it's just a, something you have to mow. So it's not so close to the sidewalk. It's kind of whether it's allowed on the property line or to go out to the sidewalk. Um, but then the transparency thing, I had. Uh, you know, I think that's a good point. I, I generally agree, it's kind of nice to have you know, the house visible on a corner lot like this. Although I just took a look at the site plan again and it looks like the fence does stop. I guess that's the 60% um, back or whatever that percentage is. So like those bay windows are exposed. I think that one tree will be outside of the fence. Right, it has so, to be set back at least 40% and I think they're well beyond that 40% yeah. requirement just because of the, the bay window and things that are in the way. So, so I actually think, you know, personally, because there is a documentation of this condition all along the street, um, and because it stops well past that bay window and other kind of significant kind of architectural features, I, you know, personally, I don't have it. Except that the fences don't really, it, it's, it, it's, there's a purpose, and that is not so you can see the house, but it is to maintain the openness of the district. Um, so, whether or not someone else did it or not, I'm not sure is something that should guide us going forward because we're not sure exactly how a lot of things happened. I just know that it makes a big difference in terms of the way the neighborhood feels and its historic feeling to have those corner lots uh, much more open. I, I tend to agree with you in terms of, it's right. I guess, just practically speaking. In this one, we've seen this house several times now, and there's a lot of unique circumstances with it. So this is one that I can get on board with, not having that see-through fence and, again, kind of pushing it wherever we want to, on the, whether it's on the sidewalk or two feet back. Um, but because it sits within that setbacks, and you know, since the neighbor agrees to where this fence is going to be placed, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with it. Well, you know, though, that we're, we're making a decision not for just this neighbor, but for neighbors sure. from now on, Yeah, which is a, little, is a little harder. And what's the city set back on those? I don't know if there is one on. It might be on the property line. I'm not sure. Yeah. Maybe Alan knows better, but I think I, it might be the property line. The front uh, is, you know, there's step back on the side, I think. I just don't know on a side street. I'm not sure. I know there's an additional building different. setback. Yeah, Depending it's different. Depending on, on what the plat says about what the setback Do you know, have you talked to the city? 
be done. <laughs> I mean, I, I think the HP, and Reedy could maybe confirm this, would take precedence over, you know, if we approve it here, it's kind of, that is kind of zoning. I don't think so. Or that, is well, it not? I think you still have to. He still has to get a fence permit. Yeah. And if it doesn't oh, okay. meet the zoning requirements yeah. there, they won't issue. They wouldn't issue. It's, it's the other way around. Gotcha. They, they trump us. So gotcha. Okay. So I with the mo most things we trump, but with fences. <laughs> no, they take into consideration what we say. Yeah. So they're gotcha. more, much more likely to uh, give a variance if we have weighed in one way or the other, I believe, is what really happens in well, real life. The permit counter won't be able to give the variance. That would be Board of Adjustment. Yeah, that would be the Board of Adjustment. But the uh, fence counter will see whether or not a certificate of appropriateness has been approved by this body. And if it has, and if it meets the rest of the requirements, then they'll give a fence permit. I believe in the past I've seen fences that were beyond the property line just have to come through and get a revocable permit because they're right. technically in the right of way. Ah, right. Yeah. I know they can go up to eight feet in height on the side um, outside of HP, and we hold them to six feet. Um, and I know there are requirements citywide for fencing in front yards and the height of fencing in front yards. But as far as I'm aware, there's not a requirement for a a, there's not a requirement for a setback other than if you're over your property line, you need a revocable permit. Right. So you will need that if you go to the, up to the sidewalk. Um, so we're really looking at more impact on the neighborhood and uh, appropriateness from the uh, guideline standpoint. Um, you've got two trees right there. I was looking at uh, one of the photographs. And um, Paula, could you go flip the photographs? One more from the front. Right there. We'll go back one. I mean, they're already kind of blocking this view in a way. I, I, I think that's kind of a mitigating thing, too, that, uh, you know, I would actually prefer it was on the property line instead of to the sidewalk, but I don't think it needs to be transparent, in my opinion. Yeah, I do, too. I think it's kind of tough on this. You know, we have the guidelines, but historic neighborhoods are so unique, and you know, every street has its own specific character. So it's always kind of a mix between uh, what the guidelines say and what the adjacent neighborhood is doing, in my opinion. And you know, if there's then a clear if the adjacent neighborhood was doing ten foot fences, would that be? <laughs> I mean, that's where yeah. I I try to st stay consistent, um, so that people know what to expect and I, I do know that consistently corner lots have had transparent fencing mm. until very recently. What transparent fencing? Um, probably because yeah then it just goes right into the backyard. So you're looking more for the privacy aspect of it? Um, yeah um, we were planning to put a table right that that's really the only reason we were nothing fits in the backyard right now. It's all stacked up on top of itself, <laughs> uh, kind of waiting. But um, yeah, so it would mostly be so that people can't just look right into the backyard. Would you be opposed to putting on the property line? No. I just wondered where those trees, the first, the, the north tree or the south tree, where that's located. Uh, if you put it on the property line, would it be inside the fence? Yes. Then you wouldn't have to get a revocable, per revocable permit. Mm -hmm. Um, that be sort of. I mean, even though you'd have a, a little strip to mow there, that would kind of open up that sidewalk a little bit. Wouldn't feel as enclosed. Would be more than two feet. Yeah. I can't. I don't know what the scale is here. It looks like it'd be about four feet. Maybe four. Back. Cause that's a little bit more. Right, because that front tree I think would be outside the fence regardless, because of where the fence right. ends on the sides. So. Right. I just wonder if that fence was right on the property line or not. The the, the, the tree to the south. Yeah, it looks like the property line basically splits. Uh, that yard between the house and the sidewalk directly in half. Well, that dark line on the side so. plan, that's the overhang. So I think there's a little more yard. You see the dash line where the building line is? Yeah, I'm looking at this side plan right now. Looks like that. That's the overhang, so the building line's right there. Right. OK, so it's a little yeah, bit farther out. So it's yeah. a little more space. Yeah. OK, well. So it would be the property line and not the not the two feet? That's what I'm asking. Uh, I think that would be a little bit more open. 
kind of give you still a side yard, um, and since it's hidden to me uh, somewhat by the trees, it could be solid. And that's a good compromise. You'd avoid a revocable yeah. on the yeah. property line. So. Yeah, how far back is the property line then? It's hard to tell. Yeah. Um, there's a dimension on the south from the property line to the building. Yeah. Um, there isn't one. If this is scaled the correctly, there's uh, looks like four feet from the back fence to the back of the mm -hmm. house. And it looks like that's maybe four feet or something from the sidewalk. Yeah, so I think the property line to the side of the house, that's got to be at least six feet. It looks like at least six, yeah. You know, maybe even yeah, more like Yeah, probably six. So, right. yeah. Six feet from the house, sort of. That would be you know, enough room, I think, to store, you know, if you have a lawnmower or whatever else you want to. I don't know what you're planning on putting there, but. What is that little tiny note on there? Saying? Can you read that? Oh, okay. All right, so is there, sounds like we might have a agreement. Um, is that something you would be open to, the property line? Uh, uh, I mean, at that point, you don't really gain anything being that far so you, or that close to the house. It's about similar to how it is in the back that, now with about four feet. You can't really. So six feet isn't enough. You would need all the way, which would be about eight or ten feet. Yeah, I would think you would need to go at least eight feet or so to put anything back there at all. Otherwise, it's just as narrow as the, it's just about wide enough to put the, the uh, AC compressors is about, that's about it. Yeah, you could do that. That's a good place for that. Okay, so you're not willing to put on the property line. Okay, back to square one. So you basically just want yeah, to sorry. consider this based on how it's shown. Uh, it's shown on well, the property. It is shown line. on the property line. It's shown on the property line. That's the thing, uh, but you really want it on the sidewalk, or close to the it. sidewalk, or two feet off the sidewalk. Yeah. And I personally don't think two feet. So yeah. I wouldn't. I would go over the sidewalk. So, someone want to make a motion? If you all agree to that. Okay. And what you all think? And I'll, I'll just say two feet off the sidewalk is what the guidelines, is kind of the standard in the guidelines. So I know that seems like an awkward little strip, but that's what's kind of typical throughout all our districts is that people's fences are two feet in from the sidewalk. Oh, really? Aside from, yeah. hmm. mm -hmm, for side fences. Yeah, it seems like a maintenance issue. I mean, it looks like some of these examples show like a two foot strip or a little bit of a strip between the fence and the sidewalk. Nothing you can't, handle with, can't handle with a weed eater. <laughs> okay, can we move on this one? A lot of talk about sidewalk, I mean, I Anybody have a motion? I don't know where we are in this. Linda's shaking her head. I'll make a motion to approve HPCA 19001114, item two, relocate fencing. Um, with the specific findings, as noted in the staff report, the unique circumstance that the adjacent properties have a similar condition to the proposed fence arrangement. Is it at the, the sidewalk or two feet in from the sidewalk? Um, I'm going to suggest, and I'll ask Apple on this, I'm going to suggest that we go with the guidelines which say two feet off the property line. Is that acceptable? Yep. Okay, yeah. Two feet off the um, sidewalk as guidelines suggest. So that would be a... Uh, um, That's a condition. Condition. Okay, so an additional condition that the fence is located two okay. feet off the sidewalk. Okay. okay. All right. I'll, I'll second that. I'm moved by Klaus Ryman Phillips, a second by Taylor Fudge. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Nay. It's, uh, I think the ayes have it. Okay, you've been approved. Thank you. Two feet off the sidewalk. Thanks. Thank you. Next case. HPCA 19-156 at 609 Northwest 18th Street, Mesta Park Ward 6, consideration of possible action on application by Catherine Montgomery Preservation and Design Studio for Kevin Mears for certificate of appropriateness to seven, remove cladding at front porch and install brick and wood columns and railings, elective. Okay. 
Good afternoon, Catherine Montgomery with the Preservation and Design Studio. My client, unfortunately, is at home with all the rest of his family members that have the flu, so I'm it today. We did, um, in light of the staff report, we did go out and do a little bit more destructive investigation yesterday, and I forwarded those comments to Katie. I don't know if you've received them. Mm. I got your comments. I did not print copies for everyone. I okay. was thinking you said you were going to bring okay. copies. Okay. okay. I didn't know if you'd received them by email. No, I don't okay. think we got them forwarded to the commission. So I'm here to answer any questions you might have or walk you through anything if you think you need it. And I'll just note from the staff report, um, you know, clearly the permastone is not the historic fabric. Clearly taking that off and going back to a more historic material would be supported by the guidelines. Staff just wasn't convinced whether the proposed design was was the most appropriate if there might be something um, more typical along the block or more compatible with, with the house. That was our only concern so, was just evaluating the design for the, the brick and the columns. So you're not uh, opposed to removing the permastone. It's mainly the design of the new Right. Just placement. wanted the commission yeah. to consider the, the design. Yeah. Is, it, is it mainly this, this stained wood? as opposed to painted wood that the, the city was uncomfortable with or the staff was uncomfortable with, or is there other things that, that you guys were uncomfortable with? So looking at the, the permastone as it is, you've got full height columns with a cast stone cap at the top, and that's not an unusual design that we see throughout the neighborhoods on these types of houses with a brick column or pier um, that's a full height pier with a cast stone cap supporting the porch roof. And just the fact that there was that level of architectural detail in the permastone made staff think, well, maybe that's replicating the historic columns. Um, to either side, you've got houses with full height columns, um, kind of a similar style. Um, so we just thought that needed to be yeah. considered. So, um, and there's no record of the original there, um, well, we didn't think so until we were out there yesterday, okay. and I think we found some compelling evidence to support the use of the shorter um, brick pedestals, uh, because you'll see that um, there is some brick inside of the permastone, mm -hmm. and it terminates at about the height of the um, knee wall, or railing wall, or whatever you oh. want to call that. Is there a one of these photographs that show that? Yeah, if you'll look at page three, okay. you'll see, well, first let's start with page one. Okay. You can see in the first photograph the two additional holes that were mm -hmm. made, one on the south side, one mm -hmm. on the east. Mm -hmm. I, I need to s premise this also that the permastone, the mortar joints are failing at a wrap. Uh, there's a lot of them that you can just push these stones out. And the concern was that there was nothing else besides the permastone supporting that roof porch. So we didn't want to go in and do a big major demo job without having some direction. Um, so we went in and did these little portions. Uh -huh. And on page two, um, going through, looking through the um, south opening, which is the smaller of the two, uh -huh. um, you can see um, some red brick to the left, which is the west, and um, the brick appears to be about the same height as the permastone knee wall. Then... Um, okay, on that one, I yeah. don't quite understand. We're looking through the hole on the south? Yes. And on the left side is... The west. Okay. What, what, what? And that piece of wood... Looks like it might have been a post. It's severely deteriorated, mm -hmm. and based on the deterioration, I think it's from termites. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so it's kind of leaning into the corner, mm -hmm. the northwest corner. So the west side is brick, and the um, right side is the uh, north face. This will become clearer in the uh, succeeding photographs. Okay. Um, so the bottom photo on page two is looking through that opening on the east side, and you can see that it's kind of down lower. Uh -huh. 
Um, if you go back to the south one, you'll notice that it's about at the same level as the precast right. on the knee level, on the knee wall. Right. So again, now you're looking at a bunch of wood debris. You can tell that those wood pieces look termite ridden. Um, and now we're looking toward the west. So the brick that you see in right behind that bigger piece of wood is, um, did I say brick? Yeah, okay, so that's brick. <laughs> and then a little bit to the, you can see a little bit to the left, there's the perma stone, which would be the um, south uh -huh. side. Then the photo on the bottom is pointing the camera up. Yep. And you can see the termite ridden column uh -huh. and the um, opening in the perma stone on the left, uh -huh. which is about at the same height where the material change, where the brick stops and the perma stone goes up by itself. Okay. So I don't see the brick stopping and the perma stone going on up. I see brick going all the way up on the, in the middle. Am I looking at it wrong? Mm, that's perma stone above that. It, see how it's kind of concrete colored? Uh, okay, up higher, I see. Right above the hole on the left. Yes. I see, so that's changing to perma stone. It's hard to tell, but it does look like it's more white. Okay. Hmm. And we were also a little surprised that the bricks were, you know, all even toned, red brick which is consistent with those little um, sidewalls on the site steps. I mean, it's not a big deal. It was just, I wasn't expecting it. Okay, so that kind of addresses the height of the brick. Yes, uh, of the br the even, brick. Though, even though the houses on either side have um, columns that go all the way up, on one side, I think that's authentic. I think that's the real appearance. But on the other side, um, the material is different. And I don't think there's any guarantee that that wasn't something else. Across the street, we provided photographs. Across the street, that was actually our inspiration. Um, there are several houses uh, right across the street in that same block span that have a variety of conditions, some of them that go up higher than others and some that are lower. So we kind of, that's how we picked. If you look at page 18 of your staff report, um, so 624 Northwest 18th Street, you know, that, that one um, has the shorter, the shorter brick. So that was kind of the inspiration and the direction that we wanted to go. As far as the, um, the stained column look, um, that's unimportant to my client. We're happy to make that paint instead of stain. I'm going to say uh, I kind of agree with, I guess, staff's initial concerns. When I looked at this, um, to me, I think, I mean, the full height columns seem like they would fit better. The uh, kind of short um, brick columns with the, with the wood just didn't seem right proportionally. It just it, it looks off. I don't know if they're too small. I mean, it's a pretty big, well, wide porch. It seems like typically you'll you'll see the the, uh, the the columns or the whatever we call those pilasters taller than the one in the center. Uh, so maybe it doesn't have to go all the way up because there is precedent for not going all the way up. It does seem like the one that uh, Catherine cited on page uh, yeah, Don, that's 18. Was... The ones on the outside are a little higher. And those uh, wood. Kind of pilasters are a little yeah. bit wider and beefier too. Yeah. I think. And they're usually painted. So yeah. So I don't know. The I've got two issues there. I I think just architecturally, Catherine, to me, it would they would the, it, it would look better if the outside columns were a little taller, including both sides of the driveway. Uh, if we were to make them a little bit taller, uh, as an example, 624 Northwest 18th Street on mm -hmm. page eight, I'm sure the client would be happy with that. That, that would, I think that would look, to me, it would look a little better, um, more, and but that's the other issue. Uh, what? <laughs> painting. Oh, yeah. No, they painting. can be painted. That's perfectly fine. Painting's fine? Paint is fine. Okay. So as far as the height, I'm, um, if we said, you know, I think 624 Northwest 18, you know, looks great. I think that could be a good basis for design. 
if we made that a condition, would staff be comfortable approving that? Or? Yeah, I think if that's the, the look that we're going for the, and the proportion, I think that's something that we can work out yeah. okay. between the applicant and staff. It's very similar. Mm -hmm. And then the same height on both sides of the driveway, which is a little different. Correct. Okay. All right. That would be fine. Okay. Okay. Uh, is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve HPCA 19001560. Um, let's see, item, item seven. Um, let's see, with a specific finding noted in the staff report and with a condition to resubmit um, a column uh, design to staff to uh, Ensure that the outside columns and the and the columns flanking the drive are slightly higher, similar to the example provided on page ten. No, I'm sorry, eighteen of the staff report. Okay. Oh, and to paint the uh, columns, correct? Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. We moved by Klaus Roman Phillips. We're seconded by Taylor Fudge. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Been approved. With Great. Well, they're going to construct some, um, going to construct some temporary bracing to hold up the porch roof as they take down those permanent stone columns. And if we find something else, then we'll just keep in touch with staff. And, okay, thank you. And in case anything would change. Okay. That's thank good. you. Thank you. All right, next uh, case. Oh, I'm sorry. Would you want to come up to the podium? Sure. Robert Haggard, are we going back to the consent docket? That's been approved. If you are on the consent docket, then you are approved and you're free to go. You'll get your certificate of appropriateness in the mail. In 10 days? So like yep. it says staff recommendation approved? Which if, so it's approved. Yep. Which item oh. number, sir? Okay. Which oh. item? He, uh, Robert Haggard, he's, oh. he's good. Yep, you are all set. You're, Okay. Case yes. says you are approved. You're ready. To, you're ready to go. Thank you for coming. Thank you. All right. Next case. Okay. Uh, HPCA 19-159 at 724 Northwest 18th Street, Mesta Park, Ward 6. Consideration and possible action on application by Noah McCarty for certificate of appropriateness to one replace existing second story addition at rear elective. Okay. All right. Must be the applicant. Noah McCarty, 724 Northwest 18th Street. All right. Great. Okay. So this is an existing um, non-historic, appears to be a non-historic addition. It is sitting on top of what was the back porch that has been enclosed and extends out beyond that. Um, but this addition is not present as late as the 1955 Sanborn maps. And they wish to basically remove it and replace it at the same depth but extending it to be closer to the full width of the house. Um, and I believe uh, we were able to get these pictures from, I think this is from a neighboring either backyard or from the alley. Um, you from can't the see it. Yard. From the neighbor's backyard. Yeah, okay. see their truck right there. So you, the you can't see, it's mid-block, you can't see it from the street, but you mm -hmm. can see it from neighboring yards, obviously. Is the uh, new addition now, uh, Basically the same dimension as the patio? As the patio? Or, or the... Oh, that's the sunroom. The sunroom. Yeah. Well, yeah, so the depth will be 12 feet, and then the width as it stands right now is like 15, and we're just wanting to extend it east and west to the whole width of the house, which will make it about 30. So close to like 8 or 10 feet on the east, 8 or 10 feet to the west. But the depth is north and south so what you're looking at is just kind of facing northwest the depth goes north and south that will be the same okay so um i guess my question was right now it covers a portion of the downstairs the sunroom it's a porch uh, on the uh, the new part is, is it going to, it's going to cover, I'm trying to figure out what's under it. 
Yeah, so that little uh, canopy thing is basically the back door, and you walk in, and that was at one point a porch that somebody had enclosed. So when you walk in that door, immediately to the right is a bathroom. So what the sunroom that we're wanting to renovate now is essentially sitting on half of like an enclosed porch and also a bathroom. Okay, so it'll come across to the left, uh, half a certain distance from the edge. Yeah, so it'll back. come across to the left, it'll cover that window that you're seeing right now. There's mm -hmm. like one of those um, L supports that you can see that's kind of supporting the roof. Mm -hmm. It'll come just to the inside of that okay. on both sides. On the other so side, on the other side, is there anything under it? No. It's just over. It's just open. Yeah. Dirt. There's also a door over there. I mean, we can enter through the back of our house on two separate doors. We don't really use that one. But if you walk in on the right side, there's a door, and you're immediately in our kitchen. Yeah, there is a, a deck and then a smaller set of stairs to the back door um, at the ground level. Right. That they may come back later to rebuild some of that, the deck and the stairs and replace yeah. the railing and that sort of thing. But right now they just wanted um, yeah. consideration for the addition itself. What's a lally column? <laughs> it's like, uh, it's those columns that you see right there. It's like a four inch piece of steel with filled with concrete. That's okay, I hadn't heard that before. A lally, did I pronounce it? I think so. <laughs> That's okay. what Google told me that they were. It's a and so, steel column. Yeah, we can wrap those in some one by six wood to, or make them look more in line with historic columns. Hmm. Or we could just use like a six by six wood post and then paint it. You wouldn't really need to wrap anything. I'm not, I'm definitely not fundamentally opposed to additions at all. The only concern I have here is that you know, it's a pretty big addition to just kind of um, like visually kind of be hanging in the air, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because you have the columns there. I would almost wonder, I don't know what the square footage is, would look like, and if this is even something that you would want to do, but it would almost make more sense to me just to add like a two-story addition on the back that goes, you know, first floor and second floor. Yeah, we entertain um, that idea. The only thing is, is like, it's hard to see from the picture, but it's like you've got... You've got one plane where those four windows are on the sunroom, and then you come in about four feet, and then you've got the back of my porch that is enclosed, and then you go back another five feet, and then you see like another plane of my house. And so if we brought and enclosed the entire bottom down, because I asked this with my wife, and she's like, well, it would just be wasted space, because it's like you'd have three feet of just long hallway like behind a bathroom and you know we kind of talk back and forth well, like that's the only thing that could get this approved would we want to do it and it just it would probably be 30 percent 40 percent more in cost and just wouldn't make any sense inside the home to have that in our home i can see it being being done um, with um, kind of like a little covered porch uh I, i'm not just not clear of the details there's this one photograph on page 17 of 23 that shows column design. You know, and the detailing of the columns and that addition is kind of important to make it look like it's part of the house. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't want to look like an add-on, just an add-on with the steel columns, obviously, but uh, I guess I'm not clear about how it would be detailed. You're, you're trim, referring to the columns only? Column, trim, all that yeah. would, would be detailed intersecting with a, a hip roof and then on the other side just butting into the house basically yeah. and maybe know. you know maybe if it was beefier columns that really kind of enclose that bottom part it, it well this whole thing about how it intersects i'm just not sure right. the details um, how it would work uh, it, it to me looks like an in a, almost like an in a, with all due respect like an inappropriate add-on right now and by widening it it just makes it a bigger inappropriate add-on <laughs> is, is what it feels like and so I think yeah. I'm, it could be done as understand. long as it's done right I think you can make it look like it fits but I'm um, just not sure with the with the lack it of it feels like someone took a details. box and stuck it on the second so floor the and, you know, <laughs> now we want to widen it which which you know it was done at some point so you know it is what it is sure. right now but yeah I, I just it seems like to have this big horizontal box stuck on the back with 
you know, kind of some smaller columns, building it up. I, I think it just, I think visually and kind of. I think it could be done, um, just needs a little, I think it needs a bit more study on the detailing of yeah. the portions of yeah. columns and trim and stuff because it could look like it's just a big box. Type. Yeah, yeah some, I, I agree with that. Things. I mean, I'm not opposed <laughs> to beefing up the columns to make them eight by eight or just, you know, we're not do, wanting to do anything wild. We could make it look just like that. We just really want the space. We bought yep. this house with the three bedrooms upstairs and that's a sunroom um, with yep. the idea of being able to do like a master closet, suite, bathroom and all that because that works for the size of the family. So on the inside, yeah, it totally works on the outside. Yeah, I get that it may not look ideal, but um, you know we've talked to the our neighbors just to the east of us. We have the Coltons and the the Todds, and then the west of us. I don't know if you know Michael Corey. He owns like Chartel Arms and everything to the to the west of us. They're all on board verbally, and you all kind of feel just it looks bad and kind of like it's fallen down how it is now. So what we're proposing would definitely make it look a lot better. Well, I'm, just, I'm looking at your proposed south elevation. I just think that it needs more study as okay. far as proportions. This might sound kind of um, tedious, but I would suggest maybe just cruise around the neighborhood a little bit, and, and you might find similar examples of this where there's like a second story addition without a story below it, but maybe okay. see how they did the columns and you know, maybe find some good examples that you think you know, you could apply here. Yeah. And then just kind of. Yeah, and I've kind of done that. You know, like whenever you see a house and you see like a little um, like pull in driveway and it's like a livable right. space and it's kind of held up by columns. I've seen yeah. some of that. So that's why it's kind of made me think, well, I feel like I can do this with columns. And I've seen the real nice ones with like 24 inch by 24 inch mm -hmm. brick halfway and then like maybe six by six columns up the other half. And we're not opposed to doing that. Um, we just feel like that's kind of overkill to, to be able to support this small of a space. My contractor is just saying six by six is all you need. But if we need to. Yeah. What's architectural is proportion. You need to, I think you need to look at that. The other thing is uh, your plan on page nine shows the new addition, I think, uh, set in from the corners on the, on the east and west, which would be good because you don't want it to flush, be flush because it needs to differentiate. Yeah. But your elevation on page uh, that I just cited shows, and also your uh, other plans show it flush. So it needs the, the um, which, one, which one am I looking? Uh, are the, you uh, west, the west edge of your ad, this needs to be set in. the drawing right there. It's it showing needs to be flush. set in from the corner of the back of the house, too. So. Like on page 11 of 23, you show on one side you have the eight inch differentiation. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there you go. So if you just matched it on the other side, right. you had eight inches. That's, right. that's just where my architect made a boo-boo. Well, I, I just keep that in mind because I okay. think we probably want to see more information on this. So. so we can continue to February 5th or to March 4th. For that February 5th meeting, we would need all new documentation from you by Tuesday of next week. <laughs> um, that's the problem. It's a month in advance. So. Well, actually... This is kind of a long month. We could probably do the following Tuesday. We've got we've got technically like five weeks in January, so January fourteenth we'd need everything from you if you wow. think you can. Well, so just Angela's so I'm not clear, here, so get away with yeah, that. <laughs> he's getting a little late Christmas present here. Just so we're clear, you're referring to basically two things. The one thing is that over here on the west side. It shows to be flush with the house, and over here yeah. it's inset. And so I just need to clear that up with the architect, have him re redraw this one picture. It, both sides need to be inset a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So this one is, but he just didn't inset that one. Yeah. Okay. And then the second thing is my columns. You don't like the idea of just a six by six going all the way up painted. You well, need something with more detail, it's not, or? It's not just the columns, it's the proportion of the columns and then the, the depth of the room. and. It looks a little spindly, so they need to look at the proportions of everything and make and it's kind of a subjective thing. So uh, this looks to me like those, those columns are uh, right now look long and thin. Maybe by making them wider, it will change it. But also detailing of trim. Uh, how are you going to make it blend with the house? I think that's important to see. Okay. One, one thing to look at might be the front. The front of your house, I know the front column, you have wrought iron columns that are, we assume, not historic, but off to the side, you've got full height masonry columns 
that go all the way up, and it looks like a side porch that has been enclosed at some point. So that might um, give you some, some guidance on kind of the massing for supporting that. And that's something, if you want um, next week, we can sit down and visit, or if your architect wants to come in, we can look at it together um, I, while I you're getting your material together. I recommend that that's always good to get uh, together and just discuss it uh, with staff. Okay. Okay, so I will talk to him and see if he can make them look beefier and more in proportion with the overall size. Yeah, and also okay. the detailing of the trim is important. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm concerned about how it runs into that little hip roof on there. <laughs> where, where are you looking at exactly? That picture right there. Um, like where it hits into the, like, the, the bottom rim joist or? Yeah, then how does that work? So I just need to maybe a little more detail on the uh, elevation would be good. Okay. So other than that, like there's not going to be, if I give you that information and then I, I show up at the next hearing and do this again, correct? Or are we going to kind of do this through email? Right. And um, you, you'd submit, happy to meet and talk about it, but then you would submit those revisions to staff and then it would go back on either the February agenda or the March agenda, whichever one we choose today. And then you'd come back to that meeting to review it again. Okay. Thank you. So do we want to go for, did you feel like you could get everything in by that January 14th date? And we go um, for February 5th? We have, the commission has to specify which the date? meeting to which you're continued. Uh, yeah, so. I mean, if you're happy with me drawing this out and making that little differential, because my architect may not be able to get to that, if I can do that, I can do that this weekend. Well, we're also going to need information on the other things. Right, and as far as the columns, I can drive around, take pictures, I can detail, like, top trim and size. And I mean, it's not, it's, it's not quantity, it's just basically size and trim of the columns that you're looking Proportion, at. Proportion, design, yeah. The con overall concept, we're not opposed, well, I mean, there were some comments about it, but if you make it fit into the house, I think we're kind of nodding our heads about it, so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And it's really making the difference between it kind of looking like it's hanging out in midair to <laughs> kind of feeling like it's kind of grounded, you know, ties yeah. the house. In the okay. Yeah, because by the time, I mean, that's 12 feet high to the ground, but you know, those columns kind of go into my, my deck, so whenever you are looking at it, which, you know, if you're in the alley or in your neighbors, like, you can't really even see, but right there you can only see three feet of those columns. But even if you're in my backyard, you know, it cuts it down to, like, eight or nine feet because my deck's going to be up, like, three feet or so, so they won't be so long and skinny even after I do bulk them up a little bit. You know? Well, if you've got something, a deck or something, that helps change the proportion, you draw that, too, so we know. What's yeah, your... I kind of started to do that, and then I felt yeah. like they needed, like, all these deck columns and balusters and all that, and I was like, I'll just do the deck later if that's okay, and let's just do this. And so I felt like that was more for another time, but, yeah, I might need to throw that in there just so you can kind of have an idea of the width, length of those. Now, you could make the floor uh, portion thicker even to help it not look so spindly. You could take the bottom of that, the soffit, down to close to the overhang level, and that would right. then line up. Something yeah, the only problem with that is whenever you're in the sunroom right now and you're walking in, you walk a smooth transition into another room. If I drop that down... I wouldn't drop uh, the floor. You could drop the soffit, though, the bottom, not the top. Gotcha. So you could just make it a little thicker, and that would yeah. help the proportions, maybe. Yeah, no, I like that idea. Okay. Something to look at. I hate to redesign it for you, but those are some <laughs> concerns that might help. Yeah. Well, and to me, the big thing is how it incorporates with that little overhang, that little roof that's on the first floor level yeah. there. I mean, that was, I think, Alan, one of the things you mentioned was how is it going to incorporate with that roof line on the first floor there? Yeah. To me, that I, don't, I can't picture in my mind with it. It doesn't look like the, the, uh, the you site plans do. show how that roof incorporates. Yeah. In fact, that roof is gone in this so on I page used, seven. Yeah. I think maybe having a lower soffit might help it align and look a little bit more like part of the house. So, okay, we're anxious to see what you come up with next Okay, month. thank you. Oh, did you decide yet which one? So I think he wanted to try for the February meeting. Yes. So, February, so. continue to February 5th. Okay. All right. So motion? give you everything by Tuesday, which is in four days, Tuesday. By, well, I said we could, we could go to January 14th. Okay. Because we've got, got an a, extension. a long month. Yeah. I'll, I'll give them to you next. I've never, okay. I've never had heard that one. 
Okay, is there a motion? I'll make a motion to continue HPCA 19.00159 to the February uh, 5th hearing date. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, second. So moved by Klaus Ryan Phillips and second by Linda Schultz. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. It's been continued. Thank you. Thank you. Next case. HPCA 19-165 at 626 Northwest 15th Street. Uh, Heritage Hills Ward 6, consideration and possible action on application by Reed Schindler, Schindler Design Co. for Brian Carlosi for certificate of appropriateness to one, replace driveway elective, two, install pool and mechanical equipment elective, three, install paving and backyard elective, and four, install brick walls elective. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm Brian Carlosi representing my wife Rebecca and our, our boys as well at 626 okay. Northwest 15th. Okay. I'll introduce Reed as well because he may speak depending on what questions you have. Yeah. Yeah. Reed Schindler, uh, landscape architect and designer, okay. um, and uh, ready for any questions you guys might have. Excellent. Wow, that's quite a backyard. So just <laughs> briefly, uh, this is a pool, driveway, and some other landscape features in the backyard. They do have a fully transparent fence at a corner lot, so right. everything is to some extent visible from the street. That's why this is before the commission. Um, Existing fence. Yes, existing yeah. fence okay. is a wrought iron style fence. Okay. So. Important to note too, the driveway, although the design looks big, is actually 170 feet, square feet smaller than the current design. Something to point out as well. The driveway itself is 1270 current. We're wanting to take it down to 1110, so 170 square feet smaller. At, at which point? No difference on the entrance, on egress, ingress, egress is exactly the same. On the uh, side plan, I... If you look at, um, there's a plan here, and it's laid over the, the survey. So if you take a look at that plan, you can actually see it. Sorry, you can see it uh, highlighted dashed, underneath it. The dashed line, yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, I think it was an error, but it says residence on the garage. That's a garage. I, I just refer to any structure as a residence oh, on my you're plan. A landscape just, guy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's the existing garage. Yes. And uh, I understand that the uh, strips. In between the paving is artificial grass, turf? That's correct. To, yeah, to me, the, the, just a simple question, but it, it, one, it looks awesome, but does it fit? That's, that's the, pretty, there you go. But does it fit the architectural fabric of this community? Uh, it's That's pretty high style and right. very cool, but does it fit? Frankly, to me, I mean, you know, the, the pool's pretty far back, and you got kind of a short wall there, which, which I think is, uh, you know, I think it's kind of nice to have that um, kind of separating your uh, really existing parking space from where the pool's going to be. And really, um, at first I saw the paving, and I was like, man, that's a lot of paving. And then I looked at, kind of like you said, with the uh, existing paving, it really isn't a whole lot different, and possibly as you say, kind of west, that parking area. Yeah. But I totally agree with Taylor. I feel like, um, to me, it's almost like, why change the current drive consideration besides maybe chopping off that part that angles off and then, you know, filling in that corner? Yeah, and that's corner. a great question. And when we brought Reed out, that was our design. The problem is, is although it says elective on the driveway, the driveway is gone. Um, I yeah. have four feet cavities that are vacant. There's nothing underneath them. I think there'd be concern on even getting the equipment in there without the driveway actually caving in. Well, so, you can still put the driveway back. Right, you can put it back. Just same, as it is. Basically. Yeah. Or we can just build one that fits yeah. it, the same. We're trying to tie everything, everything in together, the new and the old, trying to bring everything to make it look like this has been there from, from the beginning. Um, My suggestion just, would be... Just to speak on the design portion of it, it just from the driveway isn't historical, it didn't go in uh originally with the house in that shape or what i can tell from it so everything on the house is very very clean and straight lines 
Um, and if it does have angles on it, it, it is a very um, calculated angle. And I felt like the driveway is not set up that way. So when we walked the property and saw the, the damage on the driveway, it was just kind of a, a first thing to try to tie all of the, the three together, the house, the pool, and then the driveway to stylistically you know, represent the historical, but then also um, you know, have a little bit cleaner look to it like the rest of the house does. Well, it doesn't really represent the historical. There is a historical driveway in, in Heritage Hills, and it's a 10-foot driver, eight. Some are, in, but they're very small and very straight. Um, this much pavement, did you, do you need to turn around or on the? Yeah, if, if you look, there's an extension already on the existing driveway. Mm -hmm. So, um, it, you know, it's kind of taking into account of being able to pull into that garage and then back out and, and drive forward. Yes. So, if um, that's not uncommon in the neighborhood, but you have to sort of back out. I mean, there's not a lot of space sometimes between the house and the garage. But this isn't a lot of this is a lot of development for a, you know for the to be seen from the street. Um, that is that doesn't really fit with any of the rest of the neighborhood design. Um, it's, I just think it's too much. I, I agree with you because, you know, we, we uh, specify even sometimes that the, the drive and this paving needs to kind of match, you know, the color of the certain neighborhood. You know, this image is actually pretty great. I think I can perfectly imagine, you know, the landscape wall a little bit farther back, and you know you got your tool, pool in the back. Even if you change the paving um, to where you got rid of that angle piece and you had that corner filled in, you know I think I, I see what you're saying. I mean, I, I see it both ways. I mean, I know <laughs> sometimes you got these weird garage configurations, and you got to be able to pull out, and you know. We so do I, pull out. Yeah. I mean, we do pull out of our garages. When you know, I've lived in the house for nine years, I pull that every yeah. day. Yeah. <laughs> but I would say without you know further evidence, I mean, they're not increasing the pavement for the drive portion. So I guess I'm, I'm not really concerned about the amount of paving in the front. It's more the design. It's kind of like garages sometimes. You know, you want the garages to be secondary to the structure. And, uh, you know, you want like a more of a simplified garage. And to me, this is like a, like a high design driveway or something. You know? And I think it's, <laughs> is, uh, it's, I don't think so it if, is. If we were, are you saying reduce some of the turf lines inside it? That, I'm trying to understand what you're I, yeah, I'm basically saying uh, if you take a look at the existing drive, like the, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, or I guess what well, was existing drive, because I guess you guys demoed that already. Is that correct? Or? Sorry. I oh, that's still there. The drive is still there currently. The way oh, yes. Is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think honestly, almost like if you, uh, you know, if you want to get rid of that kind of the angle part, you know, cut that off, demo that, fill in that kind of corner, <laughs> you know, and then just leave the driveway how it is. You know, right now it's not too... Um, you know, it's really not that visually impactful. You know, it's kind of, it's just there. Well, is there a, Katie, is there a, I can't remember, percentage of lot uh, that needs to be remain undeveloped or green? Yes. Yeah. I can't remember. Our, our guidelines just talk about not substantially reducing the ratio of um, uh, developed, or developed to open space. There are guidelines citywide for, um, I mean, basically you have to have 50% um, permeable surface or mm -hmm. unbuilt space, which typically when you've got, I think Rita's pulling up our. So yeah, I mean, typically if people have a, a front yard, they, they've got it, they've got it. Mm -hmm. um, even when you have a lot of um, built surface in a backyard. I don't have any. But I haven't services. checked those. Well, I'm just curious numbers. what percentage yeah. how we're changing the, the uh, it's not necessarily open, it's just uh, paved. And uh, I think a lot of that is considered, I, I, some cities consider the pool itself permeable, and some consider that a solid surface, too. So, I believe yeah. our, our pools are considered a structure, um, and it is considered impermeable because it's, I mean, it's concrete. Hopefully it's impermeable. Yeah. Well, I mean, we have a drainage on it, so. Yeah, the water flowing through, but it's real pretty over here. The uh, pool is probably 
the least, uh, it's behind the garage, it's hidden. It's the area that's visible from the street, it seems. That overall, there's a lot of new development, um, and it does, I kind of agree with Taylor, that the design of it, though I, I like it if it was a contemporary house, but it seems um, out, of, out of character Suburban. with, with well, I hate, hate to even say that, it's contemporary. Yeah. But people use that word a lot. I don't know what that means. It's contemporary, contemporary. but it, it, this is an historic uh, area. So I don't kind of see it being as compatible, personally. I guess, I guess my take on it, you know, what they do kind of in the back by the pool as far as the paving and the, you know, if, if it's artificial or if you have real grass in between there, you know, I have less of an issue with that. It's not really that visually noticeable. I just think anything in front of that landscape wall, kind of facing the street, I mean, you could pretty much just, you know, what, what slightly you modify. A, what do you call a landscape wall? This, uh, you see those little uh, triangle planters? Oh, on their new plan. Correct, yeah, 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 yeah. Anything in front of that, I feel like if that were more in line with what is existing now, even if you modify the driveway to, to the kind of configuration that you're talking about, I think, you know, I think that would kind of maintain the character that you have now. And then you could still have kind of, uh, you know, kind of the landscape design. I don't really have, you know, I think it's nice. I don't have an issue with the pool or the, or the paving around the pool necessarily. I think I appreciate that you're keeping the magnolia. I think that's really nice. Um, for sure. So, yeah. so the wall, you're saying the wall on the, uh, that's kind of on the. Uh, it's a tree. How to describe it. Right, right to the, uh, which way's north on here? Where, uh, if you drive into the driveway, you'd actually run into the new yeah, wall. Yeah, that wall. With the little triangles is sort of your dividing point. And Correct. So I think that's park, kind of so the driveway and the park, the quote parking areas, uh, should be simplified. Is that what you're saying? I think so because I think that wall. Let them decide how to do it. Yes. Right. <laughs> yeah. They can. So, but I think that wall is kind of nice. It uh, kind of like creates wall. that separation and and kind of divides some of the parking yeah. area from kind of the more yeah. leisure areas and I think and you have some landscaping. So yeah, it kind of adds that soft barrier without being a six foot tall. I think I agree with that, plus reduce some of the paving, I think, would be, it just seems, to me, overdeveloped. I agree. I mean, the pool is, I mean, I don't know where else you would have put it to be um, That's the best place sensitive to the street. I mean, I think you were, and thank you for that. Uh, it's just kind of sort of over, over designed for a <laughs> historic feel from the street. Um, for me, and, and, there, and there's a lot of concrete. Uh, so I think if you just took a look at it, maybe from that perspective. Are you thinking overall? I think it won't be that, it's kind of minor changes. I mean, true, you lose some drive, I mean, some Are you talking, space, Linda, but. overall, or just the part that's uh, adjacent to the street? I think the view from the street so I think part, it's it's a high it's it's a pretty high design. Yeah, so the portion it's a pretty high concept. So the portion that's kind of visible in front of your wall, that's the part you're most I don't I don't know. I mean I wouldn't I Okay. Well that's that's I kinda of agree with Klaus on that. Yeah. I Behind, think if you're looking at this image that's up right now, you know, with a landscape wall. Well it's not there right now, but <laughs> Right, it, but like, if you imagine there. it there, yeah. I think I think um yeah, you'd still the tree would still be you'd still see the tree. I think yeah. you'd kind of maintain the character of what's existing. It's like you could have it kind of both ways. You could maintain the kind of historical character, but still have, you know, kind of uh, so maybe even a little bit updated. Is this pool. clear? No. <laughs> um, so I guess we'd like to have you take another look at it, maybe simplify it a little bit, and think about the street side more being simpler, I guess. I think that's what I'm hearing. Yeah, sim everybody. simplify the, the portion in front of that landscaping wall and see what you can do to keep as much grass there as possible, as opposed to the high design style that is there currently. Um, but I'm, I guess I'm with my fellow commissioners over here with the pool being where it is. I'm pretty comfortable with that part of the design, but being able, seeing, having all of this visible to the street, I think it needs to be more cohesive with the, the neighborhood. So, so if, if we go kind of similar, uh, I think it was your comment on kind of cutting off that part and having Reed redesign this, if we actually leave a lot of the driveway intact, would we have to come back for the February meeting, or could we actually still try to do administrative approval through the department? I'm not sure about what he's talking about, cutting off portion of it. I'm not opposing the, a new driveway. Can I, I just, come up there real quick? And just, What's I, that? Yes, I can just show you probably. 
which what he's talking about the real quick. existing parking area that little leg that's coming out yeah 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 it's the east okay I guess I'm, I'm just trying to say that I think you could put a new driveway in and change the geometry some, just not so big and not so, a little bit more historic looking. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm we, not, can, we can generally administratively approve a replacement in kind of an existing okay. driveway okay. Um, that we don't think was put in illegally or anything like that. Um, the, the pool will need to be approved by the commission, but it sounds like everybody's pretty comfortable with that at this point. And then we would just have to see what you come back with for a okay. final design on the driveway and if it needs to come back. So, so what, what the commission could do is continue um, items one, perhaps items one, three, and four to the February meeting or the March meeting. If we can come up with something that we can administratively approve in the interim, we'll do that and you won't have to come back to a meeting. Otherwise, you've got a meeting date to shoot for. That works. So you could approve the pool. This is a theoretical, what you said. Two is the pool, is that what you said? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and if we could, um, during construction and stuff, the, the, the pool is the first portion that would go in. So yeah. theoretically, we could get right. going on the pool portion and come right. back at the, the February meeting. That'd be very, very easy to do. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that'd be continued to the January. Uh, Feb we can do February 5th or we can do. If it's February 5th, we'd need everything from you in just about two weeks. Yeah. Um, not quite two weeks, or we could do March. Yeah, we can definitely get it in February. Okay. All right. Okay. Is there a motion then? All right, then I'll make a motion to approve HBCA 190165, item two. Okay. Um, let me see about the, the staff soon. comments. Trying to see something about the pool. Does it say anything about the pool? Also seven, make a the specific finding. Eight. Pool. Yeah. Seven, seven eight. eight. Um, ten. Eleven. Seven, eight, ten, and eleven. Yeah. As noted in the staff report. Look, look right. Okay, is there a second? That. Moved by Klaus, Ryan, and Phillips, and second by Taylor Fudge. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, item two is approved. Then I'll make a motion to continue HBCA 1900165 to the February 5th meeting, um, items one, three, and four. One, three, and four. All right. Okay, second. Anybody? Uh, moved by Klaus, Ryman Phillips, and seconded by Taylor Fudge. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, one, two, and no, one, three, and four are continued. Okay, thank you. Look Appreciate forward it. to seeing your revision. HPCA 19 167 at 222 Northwest 16th Street, Heritage Hills, Ward 6. Consideration of possible action on application by Anna and Nathan Bradley. For certificate of appropriateness to one remove chimney on rear slope of roof elective Hello. hi yep i'm anna bradley homeowner and um new to the neighborhood and we're wanting to redo the kitchen and um, that chimney stack is you know in there and taking up space where we could have a nice plant pantry kind of floor to ceiling cap cabinet built around our fridge um, and it would make the kitchen more functional. And then on the second level, it's where the hall bathroom is, and so we could just also kind of have a bigger, more functional hall bathroom. Okay, anybody else have comments on this? Um, we don't have any jurisdiction on what you do inside the home, which so what you guys want to do in there is great. I, I'm wondering, can you keep the chimney as a decorative piece only on the outside of the house? You guys be comfortable keeping the chimney as a decorative piece if that's even doable um, and then basically leaving the outside of the house sort of intact and as is yeah well we, so we just had an architect stop by this morning to kind of look at things um i guess my question is you know that's a lot of weight the brick would it be um feasible since the, it's really the clay chimney topper that's so unique like could you do um, a 
I don't know, a lighter brick on the wood until the chimney, you know, replicate that brick up to that height and then put that clay pot on top because that's really the only thing you see from the street. Yeah, it, it's one. so much weight that I, um, I guess we'd almost have to have, you know, yeah. I don't know. It can be done inside the attic. Uh, it's not, it's not horribly uh, hard to do. We had one come up similar, um, and so we didn't allow that, uh, you know, replacing with another material. Problem is, oh, they did. They did do another material. We would, didn't allow it. We they didn't allow to, it. They want to do it out of something more lightweight. Um, it's visible from the street. To me, it's it's more decorative than more most service chimneys, which are in the back of the house. It's more decorative. So I would. Um, it seems to be more important to the house than a, some house service chimneys that are small and not visible. So uh, I I wouldn't be in favor of removing it. Yeah, I do think it's a really unique feature to the house. I know I know it's kind of you know it can be a nuisance sometimes to try to find a way to work around it. Um, I still think, you know, just from, from an architectural standpoint, I think it's kind of fun to have these kind of quirks in these old houses and finding a way to integrate, you know, the old chimney into, you know, into the design of the remodel. I, you know, I know it's not always convenient or the, the easiest, but I, I do think it's a significant feature of the house. I mean, it's clearly visible from the street. And I've that clay chimney topper is pretty neat. So. Well, and our, our guidelines are pretty clear on whether or not we can remove chimneys, and they say that we cannot. Uh, and so I, I really struggle with doing away with it. But if there's a way to keep it and do something interesting on the inside of the house, that works fine. And to, yeah, we don't have a... I was just going to say, to the, the kind of structural rebuilding, shoring up question, um, as, as has been said, um, the commission doesn't review anything on the interior of the house, so if whatever is under the chimney goes away on the inside and it's supported from, um, you know, from below, mm -hmm. then that's not something that we would review. Similarly, we really don't review um, okay. the structural aspects of how things are built. If someone comes in and, you know, rebuilds, um, let's say, a porch, and maybe it was constructed with, um, you know, weight-bearing masonry, and they go back and constructed in a different way, we don't look at that. So if there's a way to reduce the weight of the chimney while it still remains a brick chimney with the clay chimney pot, um, I think all of those are things that we, okay. we're not gonna. And that one, if we leave the exterior as is, but take it out inside with the reinforcements, that doesn't need approval? If it's on the interior of the house, it's not gonna come okay. to us for review. Okay. I didn't understand that. Just for clarity, Peggy, if you don't mind, what did you just say about materials? I mean, what were you trying? I, I didn't understand. I, I want to be sure that I didn't understand you to say that we would approve, would not care if they uh, changed the brick material. No, we we want it to remain a brick chimney with the the clay pot. What I'm saying is, so this whatever goes, yeah, whatever goes into, yep, yeah, this brick. Um, okay. I mean, if, if the chimney needed to come down and be rebuilt, that's another matter, and that's something that we, we review and approve okay. rebuilding chimneys as well, because that has to happen sometimes. Um, I'm just saying we don't review the, the structural elements of what's supporting the chimney on the inside, however that's done. Okay. But that brick, that clay pot, just roof line up, staying the same. We do whatever we want on the inside, and you're, I don't need approval. <laughs> Correct. Okay. Yeah. Anything, yeah, anything above. Okay. You might get approval from someone other than us, right? But not <laughs> structural engineer. My architects will look into it. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, so it sounds like that's a. It'd make a really neat wood burning, uh, like a pizza oven. My husband thought if we do take it down, right? <laughs> do it. I'm just kidding. No. I was kidding. <laughs> if you're gonna vote yay or nay, I was just like putting that in there for. <laughs> No, it is pretty neat. I mean, it's a cool, uh, it's a nice architectural feature for sure. But, yeah. Um, so the commission sure. can deny this or you can just withdraw it if you want to withdraw it. Because you're going to deny it. That okay. seems to be the... Then I'll just withdraw it. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, okay, thank you. Withdrawn.
We need to do anything? Nope. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, on to the next case. HPCA 19-00168 at 1005 Northwest 38th Street, Crown Heights Ward 2, consideration of possible action on application by Michael Smith for certificate of appropriateness to one construct shed if elective. Actually, I think it's required at this point because it's there. Uh, two, construct retaining wall required as stem wall for fence elective and three, construct fence elective. So one is required. Not effective either. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hello. Good afternoon. I'm Mike Smith. I'm the owner. Okay. The address? Could you state your address? It's 1005 Northwest 38th Street. Okay. Great. All right. So, we have the shed. Background on this? Katie? So uh, the commission has previously approved construction of a garage at this property. It has not yet been built, but it would be in front of the shed that you see in the picture on the screen. Um, they do have an, an effective um, CA for that and anticipate constructing the garage. Uh, we in will the meantime, be the starting shed is... next week. They'll okay. start this, uh, the um, pad, taking the old pad out that's all cracked. So You're starting on the garage next week? Next week. Right, okay, great. So in the meantime, the shed has been installed, and um, sheds of a certain size don't need a permit, but they um, do still require a certificate of appropriateness mm -hmm. um, because of the height, because of the cladding material, the roof form. Um, staff didn't feel like we could administratively approve this, so it's before you today. But we do, or you do, uh, approve sheds. We do have guidelines that allow for administrative approval of sheds, mm -hmm. um, and those are all cited in your staff report. We tend to, once they get beyond um, a fairly modest size, we tend to bring them, when they get up to closer to a garage size, <laughs> we tend to bring them to the commission for review. Because when they get that big, they also get tall and that sort of thing. Is this shed permanently mounted in the ground, or is it? On skids or it's on skids on skids, so it's mm -hmm. really not even permanent. Not really permanent. No. Yeah. So it could be moved. Even. So we have neighbor comments too. I don't know if you guys. Yes. So there's some additional information, right, for this case. You do have yes, you have um, a handout at your um, seats that the applicant turned in. Um, this week, I'm not sure exactly when you first sent it. Angela's been out, so I believe you'd submitted a packet to Angela. I did, this um, afternoon, and um, okay. she printed it okay. for you. So it's a lot of information in there that staff hasn't had time to evaluate, some of which is a change in the design to the shed, um, and some other. Let me just kind of run through it succinctly, sure. so maybe we'll have a better idea. First of all, I was, I am embarrassed but I didn't think of getting a CA before I ordered the shed. I, somewhere in my head it said, oh, you don't need that for the backyard. And so here I am now, so that's what started this. Um, I have a, um, in my handout, I went through on Google, and of course I couldn't look at any of these places because they're in backyards, but I did a, um, uh, on exhibit A1, I did a, uh, a look at Crown Heights only at where I could see accessory buildings that were besides not not including garages. So I've listed those and the sizes where um, the assessor's website listed those. The ones that say estimated or approximate are not listed on the assessor's website. So it appears there are some large accessory buildings in the neighborhood, uh, some larger than this. Um, and after I was called about it and, and I did talk to the editor, or I talked to Christine Eddington, I realized, oh, okay. So one of the things I'm willing to do uh, is to turn it north and south where there would only be the slender side towards the back of the house. In addition, uh, you'll address the materials that it's constructed from. As you can see, it's a 
It's a 50-year paneling. It's a particle-type paneling. And, and I am willing to uh, reclad it with the hardy board that the garage will be constructed of. That's an approved material. In addition, the windows are vinyl. And I've um, looked those, and I can uh, install wood windows in that shed. And I'm willing to do that also. Um, and I understood from Angela maybe that the gambrel roofing is part of the, uh, hey, we don't like the look of this. If necessary, I will change that for my gambrel to a gabled roof to make it look more like, if that's part of the problem. Um, so um, those are the things I think I can do to maybe uh, make it fit better in the neighborhood. And that's, that's what I've detailed basically in this, in this handout and some of uh, the materials. Is the shed a permanent solution or is this just in place until, is the shed a permanent solution or is it just in place until the I would like for it to be. My purpose is to have a workshop where I can do my hobbies. And sure. Okay. Katie, could you kind of reiterate uh, the guidelines on, on accessory structures like this? I know it's not, I guess, technically permanent maybe because it's on skids. Um, I know it'll be obviously not from the neighbor behind. It won't be invisible, but from the, from the front of the street, you'll have the garage in front of it. So um, the neighbor behind would see it. Of course, if you turned it, that'd be a smaller space um, to the neighbor's backyard. But I guess, have you spoken with uh, Greg and Christine Eddington on, on I spoke it with or, Christine. We yeah. didn't talk as much about the building as we did item to the fence, but. Gotcha. Um, I, to, I actually to, thought they would be here today, but apparently they couldn't make it. Just to kind of summarize the guidelines we have for accessory buildings, not including garages, um, there's some allowance for very small sheds, less than six feet in height, that can be installed without a certificate of appropriateness at all. And then most of the guidelines do fall under administrative review. They talk about um, the appearance um, and location being based on historic precedent for a shed if there is one. Um, sometimes we can look at sandboard maps and see where there were accessory buildings in the past, but those obviously aren't always shown. We do kind of know there's a pattern to where accessory buildings are located in the backs of, of yards. And this, I would say, is in where we would expect a shed to be located. Um, uh, we look at the, it talks about appropriate materials for the shed and then it be secondary to the main building and secondary to the property's historic garage if there is one. Um, following side and backyard setbacks. The guidelines are not nearly as specific as some of our guidelines for things like garages and additions when it comes to size. Um, so as I said, we've tended to just kind of estimate when it gets over a certain threshold it's approaching the size of a, of a garage, bring it to the commission, as well as looking at, at the height of it. So fundamentally, you know, let's say he already had the garage. If you want to add the accessory structure, it wouldn't necessarily be um, uh, uh, not allow the guidelines, but we would review it independently for kind of compatibility. Yep, we would look at the materials, at the height, at the, at the location of it, um, roof form, that sort of thing. In that case, I mean, the, personally, I think um, some of the solutions you've described, just personally, if I were to um, analyze this kind of independently, even with the garage, the fact that it wouldn't be vi visible from the street, um, especially with the, the roof that you're proposing, kind of the gable roof, I don't think, um, you know, as long as it complies with materials and, and the roof shape, I think it'd be, in my opinion, I, I don't think I'd have a problem with it really. I mean, uh, it's secondary to the, even the garage. Um, you know, I think actually if, if Greg and Christine, if you've spoken with them, um, I don't know about your neighbor to the side, because obviously if you turned it 90 degrees, the other neighbor would have a longer facing 
Yeah. Wall, the garage. I don't see that. Why well, that makes much difference. I don't know. Yeah. You know, there there's one more option that I really hadn't thought of, and that's to move it up, as the way it's sitting now, and to move it up directly behind the garage. And what I'm willing to do is talk to Greg and Christine um, about their preferences. If you know, if that's something, and maybe we should continue it then. Yeah, allow especially you, with the change of materials. Allow you to talk to the neighbor and maybe look. Maybe we should continue it then to allow you to talk to the neighbors and cha and submit a drawing with a roof uh, line change. That might be helpful. So. Now I have I have, there are drawings in there of it with the roof. Okay, which page is that on? Um, that it's not be. in the staff report. It's in the the new submitted materials. But yeah, I think if it's continued, on then you have time to discuss it. one and I. I think we should continue. Okay. And we may be able, I mean, as I said, staff hasn't even had a chance to look at what was submitted. We may be able to administratively approve it with okay. those changes. Um, but I, if we continue only, it, that gives us time to, yeah. to consider that. I'm only hesitating because they're going to start on the garage and it will then become rather more difficult okay. if y'all don't approve it and I have to get it out of there. Yep. So. Okay. That's, that's, that's my February. point. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So motion on that one to continue item one. I think that February 5th, is that the uh, consensus? Yeah, I think yeah. so. I'll make a motion to continue HPCA 19-00168, uh, item one to the February 5th hearing date. Okay, is there a second? Moved by Klaus Ryman Phillips, seconded by Taylor Fudge. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, item one is continued. Then we have two other items construct retaining wall um, as stem wall for a fence and construct fence on top and, of the retaining wall. Um, yeah. And right. I think the main concern with this was that the fence on top of the retaining wall was going to exceed, was potentially going to exceed six feet in height, which is the limit for fences along the sides. Okay, where would the retaining wall go? I'm in, in my uh, revision that I submitted, um, I, I've asked that that be changed simply to move the north fence back to the property line. Um, basically, I think what happened is there was a chain link fence on the opposite side of uh, the fence that's there now, and someone wanted to put in a, um, I'm sorry, I'm losing the word, stockade fence, and they simply moved two feet, two and a half feet south, and built the fence, and then someone took the stockade, uh, the, took the chain link down. So. I, because of the expense with the, sh with the uh, shed, I'm, I would not be able to do the fence. So I just need to revise that to move the fence that's currently there, repair it as necessary, move it back to the property line. So, so. that's something that we should definitely be able to, administ right. so, okay. to, be able to administratively approve. Then. I think we can continue those items as well and then we'll get that from okay. your documentation That's and you can administratively approve that. So yeah. two and three. Yep. Okay. All right, so I'll make a motion to uh, continue HPCA 19 uh, items two and three to the uh, February 5th hearing date. Okay, is there a second? Second. Moved by Klaus Ryman Phils, seconded by Linda Schultz. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, items two and three are now continued. That's it. Okay, Thank we'll see you, you next month. Thank you. All right. On to is that the last one? That was the last. Okay. Um, last but certificate not least. of appropriateness. Okay. We on. have a whopping five items under other business, which okay. is not typical, but we yeah. have three um, home sharing applications, the first two of which are actually in the same um, building so we can kind of discuss it all as one and then we'll mm -hmm. need two separate motions but okay. um, BOA 14 at 809 Northwest 20th Street Department 811 
Mr. Park Board 6, consideration of possible action to provide a recommendation to the Board of Adjustment on a request for a special exception to the use in Historic Preservation District to allow for home sharing. And because this is a multifamily building already, um, they have to get a special exception for each unit where they want to do home sharing, and there's hmm. two units um, that they plan to, to do that. So that's why you have two different BOA numbers, two different applications for this. Is the owner present? Uh, Okay. okay, if you sign in also, sure. they tried. Right. So is there one unit upstairs and two downstairs? There's actually four units. The okay. ones that I'm wanting to, to rent on a short-term basis are the ones on the west side up and down. Okay. Do you live there, Ms. Mary? Yes, I do. So you're going to want to stay as an apartment. You'll live in one, and then you'll... you'll That's right. A uh, long-term uh, person is staying yeah. on the bottom right hand. Okay. And I'm, I may decide to change that at some point, but since I'm doing this, and I'm recently a grandmother, I am using this person to kind of help me keep an eye on the property. Yeah. Okay. I understand. Okay. Since there's really no change to the property, and it's already... Multifamily doesn't seem like there's a lot. Yeah, it seems like the major guideline here is that you're an occupant yeah. of the building as well, and it seems like I'm I, sorry. I think the major consideration here, as far as it relates to us, is that you're an occupant of the building, which you are. So yes. And uh, staff is recommending recommending approval, so I have I don't have any issues with it. Chris. Okay, we'll make that motion. Anybody else have comment first? All Can right. we make a motion to approve both, or do we do separate motions? Separate. For each time? Okay. Separate for each item. Gotcha. I'll make a motion to approve BOA 14686. Um, Actually, we're recommending it. Or, I'm sorry, yeah, recommend approval of BOA 14686. Okay. Um, yeah, with the items listed separately. Okay. Is there a second? Do we, uh, excuse me. Do we, do we need to say that? I mean, do we need to have any kind of uh, conditions around that, like as long as they're the, the, the owner is uh, residing in that property or uh, for, do we recommend a certain well, length of time? I mean, are, isn't it in the findings? Well, the, the requirement that the owner live there is, is in the ordinance. So they're being, they would be granted the special exception with that tied into you know, it's not allowed if they're not residing there, um, according to what the code already says. Um, um, and it's also in your the findings. Yeah, I think it's in the three, E three. Yep, that they the owner's intention to live on site at the time right. of rentals. Um, I'm just saying, forever is a long time. Yeah. yeah. That's what I think about when, as we go through this learning process on uh, home sharing. Uh, and, and the other is... There's no time, like a... There's, there's also no number. I mean, the numbers can dramatically change. It can go from four to 15. What? Four to 15 what? Apartments. Well, I mean, they're, they're approved for a certain I'm not number. talking about this one. I'm no. just talking about if, if we're going to have parameters, but not, that answered my question. I mean, if you think they're there already, that one about the, yeah, it's in the final. being a resident... I, I yes. think it's a little vague. The, yeah, I think, I mean, the requirement is that within HP districts that you be a resident, that it be your place of residence. Um, I understand what you're saying about the, the numbers. We've talked about that with, with particularly with larger, um, say, a large house, that once they're allowed home sharing, there's nothing that says they can't divide that house up into mm. a large number of units. I think in a, a case like this where it's already an apartment, maybe a little bit more yeah, I mean, covered well, on that basis. Uh, so aren't we just proposing to allow one unit with each one of these? So It's a special exception to allow home sharing yeah. within each of these units, but that doesn't define how many can stay in the unit. So, we had so to, let's we say had a to, unit had two or three bedrooms. You could rent each one of those out as a separate. Unit being sort of like an apartment. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So you could, okay. But you can limit it to one person. We could do that to, to one 
Yes, I, I mean, I think you could include that in the recommendation that each unit should serve as one rental unit. Um, Board of Adjustment has also been approving these fairly regularly with a time limit that the special exception is good for two years or three years, hmm. um, not the full really? term limit. Well, the reason is, is that it, it is a process by which we're all <laughs> learning exactly what the impact will be and exactly how they'll be used and exactly, you know, a lot of things. But um, I didn't know if we should, if, if they expect us to recommend those sorts of things to them, those kinds of restrictions, or we, I mean, because we haven't in the past. Okay, I, I mean, I'm okay with it. Okay, I didn't realize they put lim uh, time limits on, on this. So, hmm. I think the special exception is good for ten years. Is that okay. right? I had not heard that part. I, for some reason, I thought there was a, an expiration for it, but they've been limiting it to much less than two. that. Hmm. Generally, I think they've been doing that when there have been protests. So we're really just reviewing it for, again, uh, as it applies to the neighborhood and meeting the requirements from the from a neighborhood standpoint. The Board of Adjustment would put the technical. Right, yes. seem to work, but does it work? Um, Thank you. It can't exceed 30 consecutive days per rental, okay. per guest. That's so there is a parameter okay. for that, and it's in the staff report. But there's a hotel. I mean, it could be. It's <laughs> and, I, and I think the reason for the, uh, ca for the cautious approach, I, at least that I would say, is that while, while one apartment that is home sharing doesn't it have is. a huge impact on the neighborhood if you had 200 of them then there would be no neighborhood so i think that it's just a cautionary uh to be accommodating and to and to not you know not to be uh an impediment uh unnecessarily but also to be aware that that we've not done it at this scale before, and so it, it, we'll be learning what, what truly the impact on neighborhoods are based on our own experience other, and not others. Hmm. Okay. So, you know, it would be kind of interesting that there's more of these develop, you start getting quite a few of them. That would really be different than... I definitely, yeah, share hmm. concerns. I think what what was actually a really good compromise in this whole discussion is the fact that you have to be uh, a resident of the property, which kind of ensures, you know, if it's a single family house, you, know, you couldn't ever Airbnb it. So let's say a neighborhood like this is 50 or 60% single family house. I mean, all the multifamily, whether it's a, you know, a longer term tenant or a short term tenant, you know, it'd still be kind of that same arrangement. So I share those concerns for sure. I know that there's Stories of other cities where you know, tourist districts kind of get turned into all rental, and, and that is a concern. But I think uh, a good compromise is reached with this uh, ordinance. I think it is too. I mean, it's bigger than a bread box. It also eats up it, you know, you know, uh, affordable. Well, I mean, it has a lot of prongs that we don't quite understand yet. And yeah. it, even if if we said we supported you know limiting the terms to less than ten years now. Uh, you know, I don't know if we're supposed to transmit that kind of recommendation. You know? Are we, or should we? I, I think. Um, I mean, I think that's a valid concern and a valid point, and I think you all can can pass those recommendations along if you feel like it's appropriate. So, standard is no more than ten years. So, we'd have to pick a number. <laughs> what would we base it on? Um, well, and I don't. I, I, I'm sorry. I think ten years. I mean, even to me we, is probably okay. I mean, the standard. You know, how would you base two years, five years? I mean, right. I mean, I've been doing one and two. What? Yep. One and two. Years? Yes, I, I think they've approved a lot with a two year. One year is awfully short, and you, before mm -hmm. you know it, you're turning around and applying yep. all over again. But two years seems like a reasonable amount of time. That what do they can, base that on? I'm just curious. I, I think in large part it's been in response to concerns from, from neighbors, mm. which we didn't have anyone protest this. 
So if there's a concern, I guess it could be let's try it for two years and see how it goes. Kind of yeah, I think that come back in two years to review the total Yeah, reassess, right. Have there been a lot of complaints? Have there been problems? Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we could pass it with the recommendation that be limited to two years or something. <coughs> so, can I do that? Yeah, so we did not approve item A yet, correct? Correct. So if right, you we wanted didn't us to go back and amend it, then the movement would amend it, the seconder right. would. Yeah, we had it moved and seconded, and then okay. we had discussion, so you would need to amend it, and Taylor would have to accept it. Okay, well, I think that's a fair consideration since it is new and we need to see what the impact is. So let's, uh, I'll, I'll make a motion to amend item A um, under other business, BOA 14686, um, to reduce the term limit of the special exemption to two years. Okay, Taylor accepts that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. It's recommended with uh, the uh, time limit. Then I will uh, recommend approval of BOA 14687 um, to the Board of Adjustment with the same considerations, uh, the items listed in the staff report, and a two-year term limit. Okay. I'll second. Oh, we got two of them now. Um, moved by Klaus Traum and filled and seconded by Linda Schultz. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. It is also recommended, and on to the next one, which is different. Uh, BOA 14696 at 1708 North Francis Avenue, Mesta Park Ward 6, consideration of possible action to provide a recommendation to the Board of Adjustment on a request for a special exception to the use in the Historic Preservation District to allow for home sharing. This is a garage apartment. Um, it is a newly constructed garage with apartment. It did replace an existing garage with an apartment. Um, I do not know the exact age of that garage apartment, but it was existing and it is in the city's system as having a separate street address, which tells us that at some point in time at least it was established as a separate dwelling uh, and they've applied to um, do, be able to do home sharing in the garage apartment. It's like Mr. Park is a hotbed for Airbnb. Yes. <laughs> And full disclosure, this was a project that I worked on previously, but um, we've completed a project and I have no current uh, interest with the you're not gonna applicant. Live, so. You're not going to live in it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, seems pretty simple, same issues. Um, so... I'll make a motion to recommend approval of BOA 14696. Uh, it's an honor to the Board of the Board of Adjustments for special exemption to use the back garage as an as a Airbnb for Historic Preservation District. You want to put a time limit on it like we did the last one? <laughs> I don't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't put a time limit on this one because it doesn't have multi uh, multi tenants. Just so I guess I would just let this one go on to the BOA and go from there. I'd put a time on it. I mean, we either believe that we should review them in two years or not. I mean, that's kind of, I don't see the difference. If you want to see, say, in two years, the overall impact on the neighborhood of Airbnb, I, that's valid, no matter I, what I, it is. I'm certainly happy to add a time limit if my fellow commissioner would like that. <laughs> okay. <Thank you. laughs> um, and we can recommend that of, for a two year time limit. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All right, it's so moved by Taylor Fudge, a second by Linda Schultz. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. That one is also recommended. Oh, I'm sorry. Would you like to come up to the microphone and introduce yourself and name and address? My name is Andrew Diaz, and I am the owner of, at, uh, of 825 Northwest 16th, which... Uh, the last one? Yes. This, okay. Well, the, the, the building actually has a property address of 1708 North Francis, but the house right. is 825. So my question is on this issue of the time limits, though. Um, it's, I don't know, I, I, I mean this respectfully, but it sounds like you, we're overstepping our boundaries in this part. We're making a recommendation. Mm -hmm. The Board of Adjustments will make the decision. So right. I probably ought to go to the meeting to 
Right. Uh, yeah. I just, it just, I mean, you know, if, if I, I get, all right, yeah, like I said, I don't want to, don't, don't, don't mean to, to, to get into an, a big argument. It just seemed a little funny that, I mean, if the, if the ordinance has already been set, then the point of HP, would, in a way, my understanding is, okay, we've, we've, we've presented this now, um, we've had an opportunity for neighbors to Right. You know, to protest. And so there's a, if you read that, if there's a 10 year uh, uh, maximum. You know, right, right, right. Which, which would be, so, right, which would be understandable. So, I mean, so all we're saying, and apparently the Board of Adjustments has been doing this, we sure, would just, like to reassess in two years because we're not sure what the impact will be on the neighborhood. And that's really our concern. What's the impact on the neighborhood? No, and, and I think we all agree with that. I mean, we, we don't want to have a negative impact that? like that. That's, just That's what I think we're trying to say. Well, and I don't know. What are the notification of how many neighbors do you do? Do you just do? I, I think it's a thousand feet. Well, I mean that's hardly any neighbors really. So oh. over a, over a two year period. That, that, that's a that's a that's a that's a decent size. But over a two year period, we'll have an opportunity, and it may be nothing. It no, I, I get that, but 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 you, but uh, I guess what what happened is permit. what would happen then, like for myself and, and the other people who come through this, is it another process like this, another three hundred dollar application to get all this approved and all? I mean, it, it, it's all right. The three hundred dollars is the thing, but it's a, some of the stuff we we ask for is kind of. You know. But we're just trying to balance that with right. the, the neighborhood. We don't know what's going to happen. As somebody said, what if we had a whole block full of these? You know, it'd be a different story in a few years. But so it's we're just trying to balance that. But right. go to the board of adjustment. That'd be the no, yeah, no, no <laughs> plan to. All right, all right. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Well, thank, thank you. Appreciate you uh, making those comments. Yeah. Okay, now on to um, Preserve o D, Preserve Oklahoma City. So last month we, well, you've all, I think, heard the plan at a number of different um, venues. Last month we presented it briefly at the close of the meeting, and today it's um, in front of you to um, adopt a resolution um, that provides a recommendation to Planning Commission and City Council that Planning Commission adopt the plan and City Council receive the plan. Um, it also has the H this commission adopting the plan and the position on historic preservation within. Um, you want me to read it? No, just kidding. No. <laughs> I will long. if you want me to, but I'd rather not because <laughs> I'll probably catch all my typos. So. Well, I think we're all in favor of this. Was anybody like to... Um, Move that we adopt the resolution. Would anybody like to move we adopt the resolution? Okay. There's a second. I'll, uh, I'll second that motion. Uh, it's been moved by Taylor Fudge and seconded by Klaus Raman Phillip. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, it is adopted and I just have to say again, good job on on that. Okay, and then our yeah. final other business is to elect a vice chair since Mila is no longer in her position. Yeah, and this has been rigged, so uh, Linda, did you have something you want to Are say? you opening the floor to nominate? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to nominate Taylor Fudge. Okay. Is, is there's there only second? one other person to second it, so. I'll second it. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, condolences, I mean, congratulations. <laughs> so you'll sit over here next time. Okay. I won't be here, so it'll be, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Alan's gonna take the next two months off. Next so. three months, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh, okay, on to communications and reports. Nothing? Um, I will report, I, we don't have it down here, but under Board of Adjustment, um, the appeal for the um, proposed demolition of the house in Heritage Hills East 104 Northwest 20th was, um, was heard and kind of automatically continued um, because they, the attendance of Board of Adjustment was such that they needed to have a unanimous vote and they didn't get a unanimous vote. So that automatically continues it to a future meeting. It has been continued again um, because there is a deal in the works for the property to perhaps change hands. So we'll um, 
keep you posted on what happens with that. But uh, okay. it's right now on hold. So. Okay, okay, okay. Withdrawals, non administrative closures. Administrative closure, what's that? Let's see. Those are, yeah, we usually don't have too many on here. Just um, one. They, those are applications that either were approved and then never turned in um, required documentation or an application that was never even heard because it hmm. never, we never received the documentation. So it's just now uh, closed. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's not denied. It's not um, withdrawn. It's just a staff way to close them out when they're not moving forward. Okay. After a set amount of time. Can they come back? No. Okay. All right. Sorry, Floyd. Um, D City Council, nothing. Board of Adjustments, nothing. Planning Commission, nothing. Ad hoc committee, don't have anything. Anything from Municipal Councilor? No. Okay. Next regular scheduled meeting for the Historic Preservation Commission is February 5th, 2020, at 2 p.m. at the Municipal Building, City Council Chamber, right here. New applications for this meeting were received December 31st, 2019. New information on projects continued from today's meeting to the upcoming meeting must be submitted to staff by 4 p.m. Tuesday, now January 14th. It's good you, you let them have an extra week. January 14th, 2020. Angela will not be happy. To the next regularly scheduled workshop for the Historic Preservation Commission is Wednesday, Mar March 11th, 2020 from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. at 420 West Main, Suite 900. Any items from commissioners? And anything from, oh, sorry. <coughs> the, neighbor, the status of the neighborhood committees, weren't you going through some sort of process with them, recertifying the neighborhood advisory committee so we're we're supposed to do kind of an annual review with them we had reached out um, angela had reached out several months ago and gotten pretty minimal response from neighborhoods so we haven't been working on that since the last meeting but it is something on our kind of to-do list for the, the start of the new year to contact each of those neighborhoods if we've got a contact for their review committee um, to get with them and if we don't have anyone to Work with them on have, getting someone appointed. Yeah, talk about that. If you're still having issues, that's where I was going on this. It, um, if you're still having issues, maybe we can talk about that at the workshop and perhaps we can be of some help. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Uh, any citizens to be heard? Okay. All right. There being no further business, we are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>